What's up friends, hope you're having a fantastic day. If you have been following along with us from our previous videos, then you should now have a solid understanding of organizing and categorizing your footage. Starting a Premiere Pro project, creating a multi-cam sequence, synchronizing interview audio and video, sifting and cutting up B-roll, music selection, and mastering your audio. In this next edition of our Premiere Pro Editing Essentials series, we will cover properly adding in your B-roll and cutting to the beat of the music in our favorite effects and transitions to give your video the pop it needs. Let's jump into it. Okay, so as you can see, we have our main hero timeline all set up with our interview foundation. Remember, from our last video, we decided to create a 30 second hero video highlighting Bushido Jiu Jitsu. That means we had to cut our initial interview down from 20 minutes to 30 seconds, selecting only the best sound bites. And don't forget, we have our original multicam sequence reserved so that we can always resort back to it in case our client requests additional interview cutouts. We want to always leave a trace with our media to not only stay organized, but to save us headaches in the long run. Okay, same idea here. We have all of our B-roll selects all sifted and chopped up. We're gonna hit Command A to highlight all of our clips. And now let's drag them into our main hero timeline. We're gonna do our B-roll selection here, reserving additional B-roll we may be able to use for this client and other videos in the future. Remember, we have our 30 second interview foundation. Keyword in that is foundation. It gives us the context we need to now properly select our B-roll. We've now began integrating this in our testimonial projects for all of our clients, obtaining the interview first, then utilizing what they mentioned in their interview to better understand what type of B-roll we need to capture. In this project, our interview foundation will give us the context of which B-roll clips to include. Take a listen. My name is Christina Diamichis. My husband and I were talking and he had always been interested in jujitsu. We started and ever since we just, we could never stop. I'll have my son on the sidelines in his little carrier watching. I can't tell you how many times I've seen a black belt walking around holding him. The professors know how to speak to me and how to train me specifically. Try it for a month. It'll sell itself, and then I don't think you could talk yourself out of it. She mentions that both her and her husband trained jiu-jitsu together. She also mentions that she just had a baby, and that her baby is right there on the sideline watching her parents train, and that the coaches at Bushido know how to train her specifically. Now we know what type of B-roll to look for. All right, guys, so now you can see we have our B-roll in our timeline, and what I'm really looking for here is I've mentioned in other videos, really just like three to five seconds of usable footage. The main thing here that I wanna really nail home is that we have our B-roll selects reserve in our B-roll selects timeline. So that way in our main hero, we're really just gonna be cutting up specifically for that 30 second video that we're making. My right hand is on the trackpad. I'm, I'm scrubbing through using the playhead. My left hand is just pounding on that space bar whenever I feel like I have a good clip. And you can see I'm, I'm just looking for some good clips. Here's some a great shot of all the coaches, a clean shot, nothing in the foreground on this one. Boom, I like that. So I hit C and then make a cut. I'm gonna scrub, scrub, scrub. We don't need kids in this. So I'm gonna hit F to delete the rest of the clip because I didn't like it. And then I'll just scrub, find another good angle, boom. Great angle of her getting promoted. Scrub, 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 scrub. I like that. Hit a cut right there. Let's see, and then I like that hug right there, the coach. Yeah, I like, I like it actually to right there. So what I'm gonna do is hit Command Z, take away that cut, and then make a cut again. Oh yeah, she picks up her baby. There's the baby on the sideline. Okay, so she goes, grabs her little son. I love that interaction right there. Yep, very nice. So right before it cuts off with that little girl's head in the front, I'm gonna hit C. Yeah, there it is. Nice little family interaction there with the husband. Perfect, that's what we need in this video. That's the process, I'm just scrubbing. I'm using my hand to um, scrub the playhead through and the left hand I'm pounding on the space bar. I'm watching back when I feel like I see a good stable clip. All right, we have our B-roll ready to be inserted with our selected song. Let me walk you through my mindset on when and where to insert B-roll, cutting it to the music and cutting between the interview clips. All right guys, so now we have our B-roll select sifted, cut up and specifically selected for this specific video. I have some vertical clips that my wife took on the Fuji X-T4 and then we have in the orange 
we have our uh, Zcam E2S6. And in the purple over here, we actually have some drone footage. I put the drone up in the, in the Academy. So we got a really cool shot there. Academy shots outside, Dallas skyline, because uh, they're downtown. Uh, so some really cool shots. So I'll probably integrate, we'll probably want to integrate that. And as I'm creating out my timeline now, Remember, we have our song, we have our audio mastered, we have our base color grade on our multicam sequence, and we have our multicam sequence chopped and cut up and switched to different cam angles, and our adjustment layer on top is, is the base color grade. So now we're gonna add in and we're gonna start to piece together this video. Now the first thing I look for as I'm listening to this back is Christina Diamichis. My husband and I were talking and he had always been interested in jujitsu. So what I want to do here is I want to start with some fun clips with the slate. We're clapping her in. I love starting with that. So I'm going to start with that shot. I'm going to go ahead and drag that in to the first clip. Okay, so now we have our slate shot in. Let's play it back. My name is Christina Diem. Okay, so we're going to cut my name is right there boom so we're gonna make it uh really fast this is a fast-paced video so all of the cuts are gonna be really quick my name is okay and then from there as a transition piece i don't want to go from slate in and then go right to her at the jiu-jitsu gym we're giving her her an introduction with slate we're showing her right away the the location has to have an intro as well so with that in mind, I'm going to introduce the, the Jiu Jitsu gym with some of our drone shots. So before we get to her there, we want to let the viewer travel to that place smoothly. So we want to make sure that we don't just jump cut to her in a, in a different place. So we're going to go ahead and show you the environment first as a quick context piece. And then, and then we'll show her in the Jiu Jitsu gym. So uh, we got a couple clips here that I really liked. Um, let's start off with, yeah, let's start off with Dallas Skyline real, fa real fast since that is the location. My, let's play it back. Let's see how this is looking. My name is Christina Diem. Oh, yeah. So we're going to piece that in and see how as I'm, as I'm putting this into the timeline, I have my layers. They All my layers go up on the timeline. So you can see... My multi-cam sequence is in one layer. The adjustment layer that is color grading that multi-cam sequence is right above it. And then I have my orange clips uh, on the next layer. That's gonna be the Z-cam clips. And then I'm gonna keep going. I'm not gonna go, even if they are sequential, like one clip to the next, I'm not gonna put the that drone purple clip next to it on the same timeline because then you start to get it starts to get really confusing when you're adding in effects or color grading you want to color grade a whole layer and you want to highlight it you don't want any other clips on that same layer so to stay organized i'm going to put that uh, drone shot above uh, on the next on the next layer above the z cam clips that way we keep organizing up and sometimes i even like to mute her voice so that way i can hear the song and make sure that we're cutting to the beat properly. So I'm going to head over to the music track here, which is on audio two. And I'm going to hit, you can either hit solo track or you can mute the the audio above it. So that's this, this here is going to be her, her audio. So you can just mute it. Um, or you could have just hit a solo track on this one. Either way, uh, a solo track helps a lot when there's a lot of other things you want to mute. Maybe there's her voice, other sound effects, tons of other things underneath it, and you want to just play the music, then you'll hit solo track. So probably good practice just to hit, go to the, go to the song track and just hit solo. All right, so now we're going to only hear the music. Let's play it back. Okay, so it's pretty low because it's only, uh, it's, it's playing uh, underneath her voice. So I'm just going to, I'm going to listen carefully and try to cut to the beat here. I'll try to turn up for you guys. Okay. It's already pretty decent if you can hear the beat. All right, so I'm gonna cut, I think this middle clip can cut a little bit quicker. Even the first clip, let's, let's go crazy. Let's cut it fast. Boom, right there on that first beat, we're gonna cut it. Okay, so we have our B-roll nicely integrated with our interview foundation. Let's talk through our most commonly used effects and transitions to bring some flavor to these clips. Warp Stabilizer. 
Typically with Premiere, you can't use this effect with a clip that looks like it was shot on a roller coaster. But if it has a little shake to it, it will usually work. With our style, we like to gradually add things in, give it a little kiss. So when we add in our warp stabilizer, we're gonna drop it to about 10% to give it a nice, stable, but still organic feel. You don't want anything to feel too robotic or fake. Speed ramps. This will be a heavily used transition, especially with a fast paced testimonial video like this one. It's a good way to bridge together clips and keep a nice flow going throughout your video. But just like anything in life, use in moderation. You don't wanna use this in between every clip as it may become jarring to the viewer. Let's apply it to these two clips. Select the clip on the right and head over to the effects control panel. Under speed, toggle this drop down, and now you should see a line representing the selected clip. This little diamond shape icon we will use to make keyframes on our clip to create our speed ramp. Let's place the first keyframe where we want our ramp to begin. Let's start right here. Now when I raise this line up, it will increase the speed of the clip beginning from the keyframe to the end. And it's really a creative choice on how much speed you want here. If you want a really fast transition, crank it up to something like 500%. If you just wanna bring it back to normal speed, so from 24 frames per second to its original speed of 60 frames per second, then crank it to 250%. If you do the math, 250 times 0 0.24, which is our timeline frame rate, brings you back to 60. The speed amount is your creative choice. For fast paced videos, I like to crank mine to around 400%. Now do the same to the adjacent clip. Move the playhead a few frames into the clip to give the transition some time, add in a keyframe and match the speed that you used in the other clip into this one. So I'm gonna crank this up to 400%. Now add in your ramps to make this a smooth transition. Click on this little icon and drag it to where you see fit. I'll leave it right there. Same thing on the other clip. Now let's play it back. Looks awesome. Now keep in mind you can't apply a speed ramp to a clip that has warp stabilizer to it. So the workaround is to nest the clip to be able to apply a speed ramp on a warp stabilized clip. Nesting is essentially creating an additional sequence with any selected clip that you wanna nest. So for example, if you have a bunch of effects on top of one specific clip, you can highlight all of those effects, right click, hit nest. On my keyboard, I have this set to in, then give it a name. And as you can see, these clips have flattened out to one layer. And if I double click this green clip, you can see all of the effects that I nested. So it's a great organizational tool and it also creates a clean slate for any one specific clip. And that's how we're gonna use it here. Premiere wouldn't let us apply a speed ramp to a warp stabilized clip. You can see the effect here in the effects control panel. Once we nest it, now you can see that effect isn't there anymore. The warp stabilization is still there just in another sequence, AKA our nest. So now the slate is clean to add in our speed ramp or any speed duration change. All right guys, we have a solid video going so far. Our B-roll has some basic speed ramps and extra stabilization. We properly integrated it with our interview, added in our music and mastered our audio. The last and final step is to color grade. If this video helped you out in any way, please be sure to give us a like. And if you have any questions, drop a comment below and we'd be happy to help. To not miss any of our videos in the future, please subscribe to the channel. We appreciate you so, so much and we'll see you in the next one.